So yesterday we got ourselves the news that the Tampa Bay Lightning handed out a contract extension to one Tanner Janot. Take a look at this. It's a two-year deal worth an AAV of $2.665 million a season. And, I mean, look, if you're going to do the here's Janot thing in the tweet, why not make the dollar amount 2.666? Why keep it at 665? Especially if you're going to have shining references in there. But either way, Tanner Janot got signed to a contract, and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to go over the entire situation with Tanner Janot and also revisit the trade which sent him over to Tampa Bay in the first place. Now, Tanner Janot is a really intriguing name, because just last year, Tanner Janot, at 24 turning 25 years old, was a rookie in the NHL for the Nashville Predators. He had 81 games played, led the entire rookie class in the NHL in goals with 24, and he had 41 points on top of that. Not to mention the 130 penalty minutes, which really put him on the map as this brute force of a power forward guy who had a goal scoring touch, 6'2", 207, so he's not huge, but he's definitely big enough to make an impact out there physically, and that's what he did in this first season in Nashville. It's honestly kind of funny, because you take a look at his rookie season in the NHL, just the prior year, he was playing with the Florida Everblades in the ECHL. He had a five-game stint over there. Now, sure, he also played in the NHL and the AHL that season, but it was kind of interesting seeing a guy go from what was essentially being a ECHL tweener to NHL regular. Despite this, though, Tanner Janot, in his next season's worth of play, his second full year in the National Hockey League, saw him put up 14 points in 56 games. Now, the penalty minutes stayed the same, 85, he was still going out there and brutalizing guys, but his point production and goal scoring dropped off tremendously. This is why, when you saw Tanner Janot get traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning, a lot of people were like, okay, well, we can see where the Lightning are coming from. They're trading for a guy that at one point last season was seen as one of the more versatile and physically capable players out there. He also had a goal-scoring touch. The Lightning want to get that back, especially since this guy is younger. He was 25 at the time of the trade, now he's 26. Just like Brandon Hagel last time, it makes sense why the Lightning are going after Janot. What did they trade to Nashville? This is where you get into the nitty-gritty, because Tanner Janot was traded from Nashville to Tampa Bay in exchange for defenseman Cal Foote, the Lightning's first in 2025, their second in 2024, as well as their third, fourth, and fifth in 2023. Five draft picks. That's almost an entire draft class from one team, along with defenseman prospect Cal Foote getting sent over for one guy who was set to expiring later in the offseason. The Lightning paid a tremendous amount for this guy. That's one draft class's worth of assets right there. Literally a first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and another defenseman prospect. That's huge. And immediately you saw the backlash, a lot of people saying, wait a minute, why? Like, this guy had 14 points in 56 games played. He had 85 penalty minutes, why are you trading away a draft class for a brute? What's going on here, Julian Brisebois? And... Unfortunately for Janot, his scoring woes continued with Tampa Bay. He had 20 games played with the Lightning, 1 goal, 3 assists, 4 points, 0 points in 3 games in the postseason as well. And so, when it comes to the optics of just how everything looks, sure, when you re-sign a guy like Tanner Janot to a 2-year, $2.665 million AV extension, you could understand that you're paying him because of the body of work he has had done before. You can understand that Tanner Janot is taking a bridge deal because he wants to show off that the small sample he had in Tampa Bay earlier this year wasn't indicative of his entire skill set. He's better than four points in 20 games. This makes sense when you look at it from the contract amount. It's just, in hindsight, when you acknowledge what the trade actually looks like, I don't know if it looks any worse, to be honest. That's not me going out there and hating on Tanner Janot either. I mean, you remember the videos we made last year in 2021-2022, talking about the Calder race, the Michael Buntings and the Moritz Siders and the Raymonds? Tanner Janot was right in that conversation, and you can go back to videos from last year where we discuss, hey, this guy in Nashville is a really good goal scorer, and he's a really good versatile puck protector, and he really moves with the puck, and he's physical, and he can fight, and he does all these things, and he's a good rookie... And then he went and had this previous year. Now, I get it. You could say health. He had injury problems this previous season, which didn't 
really help him in that respect. But at the same time, just the sample on paper is not promising when you think about what the Lightning ended up giving up. If Tanner Jeannot becomes what we think he has the potential to becoming, then okay, maybe an entire draft class worth of picks plus Cal Foot is a worthy return. And I would also say that a lot needs to go right for that to happen. Tanner Jeannot needs to establish himself as a top six caliber power forward who gets back up to his scoring ways. He needs not only just a 24 goal year, he needs a 30 goal year, maybe even 35. Add on a bunch of assists and you get yourselves a guy who gets maybe 60 to 70 points every year and 100 plus penalty minutes a season. If he's going out there and fighting, he's being, let's say, Matthew Kachuk light, then all of a sudden, boom, I could understand why you're trading away the stars and the moon to get a guy like this. Because for Tampa Bay, I mean, they're in the window of contention right now. They don't want to stop anytime soon. So you throw in all the chips when you have them just because you want to keep things up in today's world. And that makes sense, it's just not really the most practical way to go about it, especially when you consider that Nashville got a draft class's worth of picks for this guy and you re-signed him. His contract is $2.665 million a year. You traded away a draft class for $2.665 million worth of a player. Like, I know I can give all the caveats and I can believe in Jano, and you can believe in Jano too, but just the way everything looks, the optics of that, yeah, it's not great. Not until Tanner Jano goes out there and has a breakout season next year, besting his career highs in his rookie season and actually beating that sophomore, maybe even junior, slump in the NHL. Of course, I'm going to go out there and root for the guy, because we like to see NHL success stories. We like to see guys living up to their potential. If Tanner Janot becomes some sort of a top six dual threat where he's a very good puncher as much as he is a scorer, then that would be great. That would be awesome to see him actually break out on Tampa and for Julian Breezebois to get his money's worth, to get his draft picks worth, to get all the goals, fights, and penalty minutes that he thought he was paying when he traded away a first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and Cal Foot. But of course, the first step in that entire process is the contract extension, that in which we saw yesterday. If Jeannot really believes in himself, which he should, you know, he's an NHL athlete, he took a bridge deal for a reason, because he wants to prove in the next two seasons that he can be that guy. And by the time 2025 rolls around, he'll get another contract extension, hopefully that's a lot beefier, more juiced up, and will serve him maybe for the rest of his career. Hopefully, at least, assuming it's going to be a long-term deal, if he actually does play well enough to justify getting a long-term deal. But we'll let 2023-2024 decide that for us. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the Tanner Jeannot trade five months after it happened? They traded away a lot for this guy. And they just re-signed him to a contract amount that doesn't really fit in with the profile of somebody that got traded for that much stuff. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel Tanner Janot is going to be able to proceed next season? How well do you think he's going to be able to play? Do you think he has it in him to become that power forward, Matthew Kachuk light type of player? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Predators or a Lightning fan. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And bye.